everybody, I'm Michael Chevella. Joining me ringside, my verbal sparring partner, former Australian cruiserweight Muay Thai champion, Mark the Hammer Castanini. Welcome to the Knox Netball Centre. Welcome to the return of The Rock, Paul Major. Coming up later tonight, we will see The Rock return here to centre ring to battle for the IAWF World Middleweight title against the King, Robert Wapier, from Hawaii. But before that, we've got four action-packed classic kickboxing bouts under full contact rules. Above waist rules, Hammer, I'm looking forward to well, it. Well, above waist, Michael, we haven't seen it for a while, but it certainly is a spectacular form of uh, kickboxing. You get to see the fighters show off their, their flashy kicks. Nick Lund is one who ha always has the good kicks, pulls them out of nowhere. So I'm really looking to a, a couple of tonight's bouts in particular. But the above waist, you've got to like that. I'm excited about it, folks. I hope you are. Stay tuned. Here we go. Classic kickboxing action. Trevor Doherty, timekeeper, Michael De Batista, and Cheryl Thomas has done tremendous work coordinating tonight's big world championship match 12 rounds for the kh surface technologies super middleweight championship of the world round one goes up our first bout no decision bout he is world champ he won a big world championship super middleweight on pat christophe's big show at eden gardens earlier this year unbeaten in amateur boxing and kickboxing would you welcome the Hungarian Tiger, blue trunks with white trim, Tibor Vermeers. Give him a warm welcome, unbeaten world champ. He'll be fighting on the big Stand the Man Kick Enterprise program at Melbourne's Festival Hall. Across the ring with Frank assisting, wearing his colours, Aboriginal colours, and a proud warrior. He is fresh from a great battle on the Tadek Solik program at the Crown Casino on August 9 where he drew with Nayib Kanj which you welcome originally from WA now based Reservoir Victoria Chris Polla no decision three by one and a half minutes your timekeeper Michael De Batista round one coming up Michael Chevello ringside with Mark the Hammer Castanini. Our first bout of the night, a no decision bout between world champion Tibor Vermez out of the red corner and the Aboriginal warrior Chris Collard out of the blue corner. Vermez, what a hot young fighter he is, Mark the Hammer. Undefeated so far in his illustrious career. Well, he's certainly one of the most promising fighters on the Australian fight scene at the moment, Michael. Tibor Vermez is a, a, a very talented Southpaw. A lot of uh, opponents have uh, a problem working Tibor out and uh, his fighting style changes dramatically and uh, he really picks his shots and there you'll see not a lot of wasted technique coming from, uh, from the man in the blue shorts. Nice body shot there off the left hand by Vermeers followed by the leg kick. Chris Collard we saw recently at the Crown Casino fighting Nayef Kanj, fought that one to a draw for the Commonwealth title. Of course, this is a no-decision bout, and you will see the men perform some very crisp techniques, a very good display of what kickboxing is all about. And of course, coming on later tonight, we'll see the return of the Rock, Paul Major, as he takes on Hawaii's King, Robert Wapia. Should be great to see the Rock back in action, Mark. Well, he's told me uh, earlier in the week that uh, he's pumped and ready, Michael, and uh, from what I've been told and from all the counts, he's been training very hard for this bout. Return to the ring after a... Uh, a little absence, travelling overseas, and uh, he's back into it here tonight. End of the first round of action, our first non-decision bout of the night between Tibor Vermeers with Dana Goodson in his corner and the Aboriginal warrior Chris Collard. Good crowd on hand here at the Knox Netball Centre. The Rock Paul Major making his return to the ring. A lot of fans of The Rock have been waiting a long time for this one. And you can bet that The Rock is going to receive a standing ovation when he makes his way to centre ring here tonight. <laughs> Both men touch gloves for the second round. Vermeers Showing some of those crisp hand combinations he's been using so well in amateur boxing too. Of course.
course, the current World Amateur ISAA kickboxing champion defeated Mark Waters from England earlier on this year. Kala just demonstrating a high kick off the left leg. Vermeer's growling against the ropes, finishing off a nice inside leg kick. It's a cool customer, Tibor Vermeer's man. Well, it certainly is, Michael. He's just uh, walking forward, stalking Chris Collard. Chris Collard, as you said, uh, fresh off a, uh, a distance fight at the Crown. Fortunately for him, or fortunately, depends on how you look at it, uh, he got a draw in that bout against Nave Cairns, as you mentioned earlier. But uh, Chris Collard is looking at a picture of health here. So, um, he's in very, very good shape. Very, very good, very good condition, very well conditioned athlete. Nice left hand straight to the jaw there from Tibor Vermeers. It might be a no decision bout, but you can bet the collard felt that one. Vermeers moves in again, goes downstairs, a leg kick to that lead leg. Nice inside leg kick there from Collard. And there's a double leg kick combination there from Tibor Vermeers. Chris Collard. Member of the Dana Goodson stable, Dana Goodson's first ever Aboriginal champion. Training alongside the likes of Stan Man Longanese down there at the front of the stars, Jim Leeds in the second round. Well, a good even round, good, good work rate from these boys. They're, uh, they're putting on a great display here for a uh, non decision bout, showing uh, the technique that uh, all those young up and coming fighters should be uh, inspired going to uh, Third and final round, our no decision bout Tibor Vermez in the blue trunks, Chris Collard in the black with gold, and there's Vermez with one of his trademark leg kicks downstairs again, nice front kick off the right leg. Collard just fires that straight right, Vermez replies with his left to the jaw. Chris Collard has on occasion dropped his hands as we see there, that's when he's getting tagged. He has to keep his hands up and look through his gloves, Collard. Especially against the likes of Tibor Vermes. Tibor Vermes is a very accomplished fighter, as we've said. And there you see just how accomplished as he chops out the supporting leg of uh, Chris Collard, Michael. Quite a few accomplished fighters ringside as well for this one. Here to see the return of The Rock amongst them. Former world champion. Dave Russell, current world champion, Diamond Dale Westerman. They've come out here tonight to see the return of Paul Major. Chris Collard just putting on a bit of a show for the crowd here in the final round. Nice body shots there by Vermez, then went upstairs with the right hand. Good inside leg kick by Vermez to the lead leg. He's Verm core coloured with that one throughout the whole fight so far. Well, Vermez is, a, is a very much a thinking fighter and uh, very... Seldom would you see him waste a shot. All these shots are landing cleanly the striking areas uh, or in the plan of a, a build-up to a takedown, etc. So Vermez, a, uh, very much a thinking fighter, doesn't waste a lot of technique. There it is, the end of the third and final round. Our first bout of the night, the return of the Rock, ladies and gentlemen. And this one, a no-decision bout between Tibor Vermez and the Aboriginal warrior Chris Collar. <laughs> out of the night here at the Knox Netball Centre. This one between Tony Militak out of the blue corner and Dean Kelly, Ned Kelly they call him, out of the red corner. Tony Militak of course coming from the Ivan Raffo stable. This one for the Victorian middleweight crown. Tony Militak, I've seen him in action before. Very tidy worker.
good mover, very good mover indeed. And uh, coming out of the Ivan Ruffo stable, he has a great set of hands on him. Ladies and gentlemen, on the site where legends are made, the Knox Regional Indoor Netball Setup. In 1992, Dave Russell captured the Cruiserweight Championship of the World in centering here. The temperature, if you ease, on a hot summer's night. Early in 1993, February to be precise, Craig Hot to Trot Trotter captured the Junior Middleweight Championship of the World. Last year, here in center ring, the Ashes, Diamond Dale, the chosen one, Westerman, captured the Isker Middleweight Kickboxing Championship of the World. So history in center ring, and tonight we see the return of the Leviathan of kickboxing, one of the pioneers, the man who discovered women had a big part to play in kickboxing. Paul, hard as a rock major, returns to centering here for the first time ever at the Knox Regional Netball Center. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to say, without being egotistical, I'm celebrating 11 years in kickboxing. My first ever bout was Jamal Hazan Academy, and in the main event, Ivan Repo. Thanks for reminding me. 11 years ago, come, give, on, give Ivan a big warm welcome here. Ivan Repo. My first ever night of kickboxing, 11 years ago. Thank you, Ivan. Ladies and gentlemen, this is for the IAWF Victorian Middleweight Championship. Would you welcome on my left, former amateur star, part of Ivan Rippo and Paul Taylor and Leon Evangelistas, proud Werribee Gymnasium. He's been here at Knox before, wearing Muay Thai trunks of black, with white, with a touch of gold and red, scaling 72.20 kilograms. He has the good looks of a Hollywood star in kickboxing. Four bouts, two wins in amateur boxing. Ten bouts. Would you welcome Tony Militech. Tony Militech in the blue corner. As I look out, I see Dave Russell. Come on, give Dave Russell a big warm welcome. Dave, world champion here tonight. Good on you, Dave Russell. Across the ring, ladies and gentlemen, occupying the red corner with his mentor, one of the silver foxes of kickboxing and boxing, 92 years of age. Would you welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Smokin the Showman. This young man, ladies and gentlemen, scaled 73.75 kilograms in amateur boxing, 12 bouts, 7 wins. Would you welcome from Mount Evelyn via the Lunadale Kickboxing Consortium with a famous boxing, a famous historical name, Dynamite Dean Kelly. <laughs> Kelly. Wearing Muay Thai trunks of purple, red and black. Your referee behind me, Mr. Peter Clark. Peter, come to center ring. Five rounds of kickboxing. IAWF Victorian Middleweight Championship. Gentlemen. Title fight. Listen to my commands at all times. In the event of a knockdown to the furthest neutral corner or to the corner that I direct you to. If you're caught up in a scuffle at any time, don't raise your hands and tell me that you're surrendering at any point. I'm going to tell you to fight out. Understand? Do not hold and hit. Touch gloves down in the last round. Good luck, gentlemen. Okay, referee's instruction from Peter Clark. Okay, we'll correct that. Okay, come out for round one in just a moment. Right. Round one. We're underway in the first round of this action packed bout for the Victorian middleweight IAAF title. IAAF, I mind you. This one between Dean Kelly out of the red corner and Tony Militech out of the blue corner. Well, Dean Kelly, Michael, he has uh, certainly the uh, height and reach advantage. Over Tony Militech. Tony Militech's going to want to have to work his way in, use his kicks and then his hands to get in close and uh, try and nullify Dean Kelly's reach. Kelly, of course, quite a distinguished amateur boxing career. 12 bouts, 7 wins he managed from amateur boxing. So I expect a lot of good handiwork from him here tonight. Well, Dean Kelly, lovely uh, tattoo job there on the back. wonder if that's from the Australian Tattoo Company. Fine job they do. Nice uppercut there off the left hand by Militech. Kelly looking for the big straight right to the jaw. 
Oh, beautiful high rail kick to the side of the neck there by Tony Militak. The crowd applauding that one. He pulled that one up a little, uh, Tony Militak. Should have let it chop right through uh, Dean Kelly's neck. So of course, uh, a good roundhouse kick to the side of the neck will, uh, will certainly uh, give you a knockout. Kelly moving in with the left hand. Militech lining up the high left round kick to the head again. Of course, tonight's fights, Mark, conducted under full contact rules, above waist kicking only. Well, that's a good spectacle, the above waist kicking. Let's you see the fighters uh, throw some nice, clean, crisp techniques. Nice round kick to the ribs there by Militech off the right leg. Militech waiting with the left hand, followed up the high round kick. Just not enough muster behind it to do any real damage to Kelly on that occasion. Good front kick to the midsection off the left leg there by Militech. And there's the end of the first round. A good one for Tony Militech, Mark. Well, Tony Militech, as I said in the, uh, in the open, he is a very good mover. And uh, he's just having a bit of a look at Dean Kelly. Dean Kelly needs to use his reach a lot more, probably uh, work in a lot off his jab, you know, keep sticking that jab and then uh, working in with the roundhouse kicks underneath of the front kick. But, uh, he's he's uh, giving away his reach advantage at the moment. Comments from former Australian cruiserweight Muay Thai champion Mark the Hammer Castanini. Our next start is IKW the Victorian Lightweight Championship, Stephen Brophy, Alex Mendelssohn. Second time, round two, five rounds, middleweight championship time. What? Underway in the second round of action, we're scheduled for 545. This for the Victorian middleweight title. Kelly with a front kick off the right leg. Militech trying to respond with one of his own. Kelly goes in off the hands, looking to work that right hand. Caught Militech sweetly to the side of the head. There's a beautiful right hook there by Kelly. Well, he planted him flush on the cheek with that right hand. Kelly showing some of that amateur boxing skill. Militech just launching that high right round kick. They'll have to be very wary of the hands of Dean Kelly. Very flat-footed, both these boys, Michael. They don't really uh, move around as much as they, they possibly could. Militech. Left hand followed by the round kick. Didn't quite find the mark. Oh, nice, nice left hand there by Kelly. Nice weave by Militech. More even second round, this one so far. Kelly's hands. Finding the target now, starting to find the mark. Big overhand right there by Militech. Not many kicks in it so far from Dean Kelly, Mark. Well, he is, as you said, a uh, more experienced boxer of the two. And he's probably, that's his comfort zone. But he's going to have to get his work rate along a little. With these above waist rules, of course, the, uh, the above waist kick score well on the judges' uh, cards. Wild left hand there from Dean Kelly. Third man in centre ring, referee Peter Clark. Front kick there by Militech. Tried to follow up the straight left. Oh, Militech connected with the right hand. Kelly fired back with the left. That's what the crowd want to see. Militech connects with the short right hand to the jaw. And there's the end of the second round of action, Mark. A lot more even in the second round. I'd have to say the first round would go the way of Militech. The second round, let's score that one pretty much uh, an even par. With uh, Dean Kelly landing some good shots there. And uh, Militech coming back with uh, some of his own towards the later part of that second round. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how this fight progresses. Who uh, can take the advantage. And that often comes down simply to who is the fitter of the two. Second chance, round three. No smoking, ladies and gentlemen, inside the box. 
Round three, we're scheduled by for five. Victorian middleweight title on the line here. Both men dancing about early in this round. There's that high right round kick by Militech. Didn't quite find the mark on that occasion. Ooh, nice left hand there by Militech. Found the mark to the side of the head. Kelly tries to back him into the neutral corner. Militech just weaving his way out of there. Front kick there by Kelly. Ooh, Kelly a smashing overhand right. And sweat flew off the brow of Tony Militech on that occasion. Here comes Kelly on a search and destroy mission with those hands yet again. And Kelly really loading up that uh, right hand. He's just got to watch that uh, he doesn't get telegraphic. He's got to try and slide it straight off the chin onto the, uh, the face of Militech without being, uh, as I said, too telegraphic with that punch. Kelly letting his hands do all the talking so far in this bout. Militech, strong first round, perhaps an even second. Nothing much in it in the third round so far. Round kick there from Kelly. Oh, Militech, the big right hand. Kelly took a taste of the leather on that occasion. Just probing with the left hand. A clubbing right hand to the body there by Dean Kelly. Militech just launching that left round kick up to the head. Kelly saw it coming. There's one off the right leg to the ribs from Militech. He's certainly throwing more kicks. They will rake up the points on the judges' scorecard, as Mark said earlier on. There's a nice left hand from Militech. Well, Dean Kelly needs to turn his hip a little more on his round kicks. There's a tendency to slice upward. He's getting the kicks in, the kicks in but they're not having as much impact as they possibly could because he's slicing them up. He's got to roll the hip over and perhaps just uh, cut him into the ribs of uh, Militech a little harder. So Tony Militech, in turn, uh, he should be possibly using his, uh, his kicks to get in and uh, try and nullify the reach of, of uh, Dean Kelly, who's uh, really uh, clubbing those uh, right hand right hand hooks and uh, of course straight rights and uh, he's caught Tony Militech a couple of times in that round so if uh, you'd have to give that round uh, possibly to Dean Kelly so at this stage it's a fairly, uh, fairly even bout both men. Nice front kick off the right leg by Militech, just switching his stance. Militech launching that right leg round kick to the ribs. Flicking high front kick to the face there by Militech off the lead leg. Kelly waiting with the left hook, not a lot behind it. With these above waist rules, Michael, it does take a lot more energy to get those kicks up. Stinging left hand there by Kelly. Militech fires back, left hook, round kick combination. Well executed. Oh, clubbing right hand there by Dean Kelly. Missed the first one, found the second, then found the target on the jaw with a straight left. Good anticipation by Kelly as he just moves out of the way of the attack of Militech. Round kick off the right leg there by Militech. It's a scoring front kick from Kelly. This bout being brought to you by Performance Auto Electrical and Dandenong Mazda Hyundai. It's the return of the Rock, folks. We'll be seeing him very shortly. Hold on to your seats for that one. At the moment, Dean Kelly trying to find the mark with the left hand to the jaw of Militech. Militech front kick to the midsection. He likes that one off the left leg. Nice body shot come over the top with the left hand there by Militech. Dean Kelly will be doing a quick count of his teeth after that one. Listen, 
Militech just sizing him up with a round kick. Kelly now waiting with his hand. Back in Militech into the blue corner. It's a slugathon over in the corner. And there it is, the end of the round of action, Mark. A good way to end the round. Well, good, uh, good way to end the round indeed, Michael. Steve Kelly, however, I'd have to say in that round, had uh, a little more effectively scoring technique. Uh, Tony Militech, he, he threw a lot, but a lot of it was just off range. And a lot of those high kicks simply uh, whizzed by the pace of Dean Kelly without much bother. So uh, Dean Kelly's, uh, you know, he's, he's sort of slowing himself down. The punches uh, he is throwing, they are a lot more effective than they're landing. And uh, his kicks, although he's cutting them up, they're still sort of getting in there. Uh, he's just got to roll the hip a bit more and uh, power into those ribs of those rib kicks. Get behind both men the fifth and final round of action. This for the IA double F Victorian middleweight title. Dean Kelly winding up a round kick off the left leg to start off the round. Which fighter will bring home the bacon face? Who will bring it on strongly in the final round of action and take the crown? Kelly again assuming centre of the ring. Militech moving laterally. His mouth guard just sent flying on that occasion. And this has been an intriguing bout so far. Nice front kick there by Kelly, his best kick of the fight so far. That was a beautifully anticipated front kick there from Dean Kelly. Hit the mark perfectly. Clubbing left hand will make Militech wish he was someplace else. Kelly just probing with that left. Nice front kick to the midsection again. Almost caught him with the right hand. Kelly bringing it home strongly at the moment. Militech launches that high left round kick. Oh, a clubbing right hand it was there by Dean Kelly. Blood flowing from the nostril of Tony Militech. Certainly Dean Kelly's looking sharper as the fight progresses. And his punches seem to be getting uh, a little stronger as well. Finally finding the mark with that front kick now. Dean Kelly has Tony Miller taking the spot of bother. Miller Tech sucking in the air. Kelly just stalking him at the moment. Miller Tech needs to bring it home strongly now. There's another clubbing right hand from Dean Kelly. Miller Tech, round kick to the ribs off the right and another. Just not enough muster behind him to do any real damage. He walks straight into a short left. And referee Peter Clark there to separate both men. A gripping final round of this bout. One of them will be wearing the Victorian title when it's over, folks. Nice right hand by Kelly. And there it is, Mark the Hammer, the end of the fifth and final round of action. Well, what a, uh, what a great bout that one was. Some fine technique shown from both these fighters. In particular, Dean Kelly, some nice tidy handwork from him. And uh, coming into that last round, his, uh, his kick started to find the mark as well. I'd have to say uh, on my scorecard, it was close, but uh, just uh, probably nudging to the front there. Dean Kelly, that's my scorecard and my scorecard only, Michael. So the judges have sometimes sometime proven me wrong, but this one's going to the judges. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards and we have a unanimous decision. Judges' scorecards are 48 47. Another card, 48 47. The final card, 50 46. All for the winner from the red corner, <laughs> Dean Kelly. Well, you called it, Hammer. You know, decision going the, the way of Dean Kelly. Double well, a deserving winner, Dean Kelly. Tony Miller takes started well. He just got picked at the post there. Dean Kelly storming home. And a great effort from him, the young man from the Nick Lund stable. Championship feels pretty good. Oh, awesome, awesome. How yeah, they been trying to get one for a while in the boxing, but it wasn't working. But kickboxing, no, it's grass. You're a pretty tough son of a gun. What do you love about the sport of kickboxing? I don't know, it's just good. <laughs> <laughs> no real reason. Without being personal, you spent a lot of time getting a few ornaments on the back there. Is that part of the being tougher and all those sort of things? 
bar just young and got drunk a lot and went down to the tattoo shop a few times. <laughs> You've come good now, you're more mature, Dean. Yeah, that's why I do this now, keep off it. Good on you. Congratulations, Dean. Smoke with Joe Martin, come across, Joe. I apologise, Joe, for saying you're 92 when in fact you're only 93. <laughs> Joe, a champion, a new champion on the block. You've had so many over a period of years. 25. 25 years in uh, Australia or in... 25 champions in boxing and amateur boxing. Yep. Joe must feel pretty good every time you have a new champ. That's terrific. Joe, what's the secret to your training? Do you drive the boys on the road at 4 o'clock in the morning, that sort of stuff? Lucky enough to find a kid who has it in him. Congratulations, Joe. Smoke with Joe Maher from the Lillardale Kickboxing Club. Dean Kelly, our new champion. Two in our program. Are you ready to rock? Are you ready to kickbox? We've talked that talk, but can you walk that walk? Sheer will, sheer kickboxing skill. And now it's time to face the music. You've seen the rest. Now let's get ready for the best. Power to the people of Knox. Because we are the champions. We are the champions. We are the champions of the world, my friends. There's no time for losing. And we will keep on fighting to the end because we are the kickboxing champions of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the IAWF Victorian Lightweight Championship. Would you welcome, ladies and gentlemen, on my left, from Bayswater, trained by Nick Lund, with Drew Tice, his chief corner man. Ladies and gentlemen, born in Ireland, Carlo Island. Proudly wearing the colours of his native country, Limerick Green. Three bounce, one win. Would you welcome the basher, Stephen Brophy. Brophy. Across the ring with Terry King. Part of the Paul the Rock Majors. Gymnasium from East Bentley, Victoria. Former amateur star. Nine amateur fights. Seven wins making his professional debut here this evening. Would you welcome Alex the Axe Mendelssohn. <laughs> Wearing blue trunks with light blue. Your referee in charge, Peter Clark. Judges, Bryce Bertwistle, Jeff Hutchison, and Jackie Simich. Referee's instructions, Peter Clark. Gentlemen, title fight, five rounds, nice clean fight. In the event of a knockdown, to the furthest neutral corner or to the corner that I direct you to. If you're caught in a scrummage up on the ropes, don't raise your hands in surrender. I don't recognise that. I will call fight out or fight on. All right? Any questions from the blue corner? Any questions from the red corner? Touch gloves now and in the last round. Good luck to you. We're ready to rumble in our next bout of the night. This for the IAWF Victorian lightweight title between the fighting Irishman out of the blue corner, Stephen the Basher Brophy, against the man they call the axe alex mendelson out of the red corner hailing from the stables of the rock paul major referee peter clark gets us underway it's brophy opening up with a front kick to the midsection well alex mendelson michael comes into this bout with big wraps be interesting to see if he can back it up stephen brophy we've seen him once before and i believe a pat christoffi promotion and uh, he's one tough son of a gun very much a baby face but i tell you what he, uh, he took a bit of a uh, a bit of a hard fight on that uh, on that last card and he stood there at the end uh, to the surprise of many people in the audience Brophy against Mendelssohn the axe versus the baby basher from Ireland I maybe shouldn't say baby basher let's just say the baby faced basher from Ireland yeah, I don't think so Bobby. <laughs> and he came out to the ring sporting his Celtic soccer top a very proud Irish fan indeed. Nice left hook there by the axe, Alex Mendelssohn, and walks straight into a left hand there from Brophy. Mendelssohn just ducking under the round kick. Pies in a left shot to the body. 
Both these men have started at a crackerjack pace so far. Mendelssohn just chopping away at the body with that right hand. Maybe that's why they call him the axe. Nice power pack kick there from Brophy. Mendelssohn tying him up, working the short right hand to the body. Big right hand by Mendelssohn. Down Brophy on the jaw. Well, we can certainly see his uh, schooling with Paul Major coming through in Alex Mendelssohn's bodywork. He's got uh, the rock Paul Major, of course, one of the most feared body snatchers in the ring. He certainly pounds his opponent's bodies, and then he takes the head when he's ready. And that's coming through uh, with his student here, Alex Mendelssohn, who keeps working on the inside. But as I said, Stephen uh, Brophy, one tough customer. He'll be there till the end, hopefully. Brophy moves in for a left round kick to end the first round of action. A strong round there, Mark, for the axe, Alex Mendelssohn. Well, it was a strong round. Uh, Alex Mendelssohn working uh, well on the inside. Brophy uh, a little uh, a little untidy with some of his technique. He seems to be getting in and uh, just not working cleanly enough. Brophy with his uh, height and reach advantage. He should be using his front kick a lot more, keeping uh, Mendelssohn away, using a long jab, as we've seen uh, Dean Kelly uh, using quite well in the last fight, in the previous fight. But uh, Stephen Brophy at this at this stage is giving away his uh, his height and reach advantage, and uh, Alex Diax Mendelssohn is just working his way in there and uh, snatching at the body. here at the Rockstep Ball Centre getting behind these two men. This one for the Victorian lightweight title, the Axe, Alex Mendelssohn against the baby-faced Irishman, Stephen Brophy. Mendelssohn just dropping that body shot and another comes up, stands to the left hand. He rocked Brophy on that occasion. Here goes Mendelssohn on a demolition mission in the second round. A high left round kick by the Axe. Nice front kick to the midsection. The Axe, oh, he sent the mouth guard this launch on that occasion, a stinging left hand. Mendelssohn opening up like a house on fire, Well, Mark. good defences from Mendelssohn. And, uh, he's just working away at, uh, at, Bro at uh, Brophy. The Axe, Alex Mendelssohn, dominating this fight so far. Brophy moving around the ring now. Mendelssohn going to the body again, forcing him against the ropes. Brophy covering up over against the ropes. Peter Clark keeping close eye on proceedings. Left hand to the head, short one it was by Mendelssohn. Works him with a high left round kick. He's like a bomber on a seek and destroy mission with those hands. Alex the Axe Mendelssohn. And time just being called there by the referee. Attending to those shin and instep protectors. Of the axe, Alex Mendelssohn, of course, compulsory to wear them in the full contact fighting there, Mark. Well, that's uh, for the safeguard of the uh, the legs of the fighters. You wear gloves on your hands and you wear the same protection on your feet. Seems fair. Comments from former Australian cruiserweight Muay Thai champion Mark the Hammer Castanini ringside with myself, Michael Chavello. You're seeing the fighting Irishman, Stephen Brophy, and the axe, Alex Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn working away. Caught him there, so a nice left hand. Brophy fires back. Mendelssohn forced to back up a little bit. Well, Mendelssohn started the round at a crackerjack pace. It's turned into a bit of a slugfest as we tick down. High left round kick there from Mendelssohn. Just not enough mustard behind it to do any real damage. And this man, Alex Mendelssohn, proving that he's armed and dangerous at the moment. Nice front kick there by the Irishman, Stephen Brophy. There's the end of the second round, Mark. Well, as you, as you said, Michael, Alex uh, Mendelssohn started well in that round. Tied a little there towards the, uh, the latter part of that round. But uh, Stephen Brophy didn't take the advantage. He uh, tied at the same pace. So I'd have to say on that, uh, on that round, going the way of Alex Mendelssohn.
We're ready to rumble in the third round of action. Mendelssohn in the blue trunks. Brophy in the green. Brophy comes out stinging. Mendelssohn ties him up. Drilling the right hand to the body. It's a slugfest over in the red corner. Here goes the ex Alex Mendelssohn. Referee Peter Clark applying the standing count there to Brophy. Brophy saying, what for, Red? I'm OK. What do you think of that one, Mark? The crowd don't like it. Peter Clark. The centre referee can often see something that uh, we cannot on the outside of the ring. But uh, certainly Stephen Brophy not happy with the count. Brophy will have to power up now. He's got to get it back. He's got to push up and get it back, Brophy, because uh, he'll surely lose this round if not. Mendelssohn connects with a short right hand. It's been batting practice for him so far with those lethal fists of his. Works a short left to the head. A very well conditioned athlete, Alex Mendelssohn. The axe, Alex Mendelssohn. Front kick there by Brophy off the right leg. Mendelssohn just clubbing him again with the right hand to the ribs. Those red and left rib cage of Stephen Brophy. That's what Brophy doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to just stand there and let Mendelssohn tick off at him because he'll get another count if he does so. He's got to keep active, he's got to keep moving. Mendelssohn just rattling off the punches when they're in close. Well, it's, all, it's all the way of Mendelssohn, Michael. He's getting in close. Interesting to note, he's getting in close, nullifying the reach of Brophy, and then he's just going to work on the body, which is very smart tactics. Oh, the big left hand there by the ex Alex Mendelssohn. He chopped him down with that one. Brophy firing back, showing that fighting Irish spirit. Mendelssohn goes to the body. Brophy fires back a straight right to the head. Great intestinal fortitude being shown by Stephen Brophy, Mark. Well, as I said at the start of the bat, he's a tough customer. And Mendelssohn landed some good shots on him in that round. What a sensational round there. Well, it's uh, all Mendelssohn at this rate. He's uh, fighting a smarter fight. And uh, he's getting in there and just clubbing away at the body of uh, Stephen Brophy. And as I said, I can see uh, a little bit of the Rock Paul Major coming through. With his charge, Alex Mendelssohn, because uh, he is ripping those those uh, shots into the body and they're uh, really hurting Stephen Brophy. to get underway in the fourth round of what has been a crackerjack fight the axe alex mendelson and stephen brophy the irishman who's taken more knocks on the front door so far nice front kick to the midsection there by brophy mendelson has had his way so far in the fight can brophy turn up the tempo here in the fourth brophy's going after him a little bit those hands they're just swinging a little too wide on uh, Brophy. He needs to punch a little more off the chin, and get his shoulder and hit behind it. Too much arm action with the punching from Brophy. Mendelssohn overcoming a height and reach disadvantage. Gets in close and he goes for broke. Clubbing right hand to the body there by Mendelssohn. Brophy just forcing him back. Mendelssohn, when he's in close, continues to keep his work rate up. Nice front kick there by Brophy. Another one there in the midsection. Mendelssohn lining up with a big body shot on Brophy, just getting caught. A tie up over against the ropes. Short right hands to the body there by Mendelssohn. Brophy, short right hand to the head. It wasn't pretty, but it was effective. What a torrid bout this has been so far. Well, the Irishman knows he's got to get it back. 
He's throwing caution to the wind somewhat, and he's just continually going after Mendelssohn. Brown kicks off the left leg there by Stephen Brophy. Mendelssohn losing close. Oh, a big right hand there by Brophy and another. He rocked Mendelssohn and again. Mendelssohn drives him into the blue corner, looks to unload on him. Brophy well, caught him sweetly there on a couple of occasions, Mark. One tough customer, Alex Mendelssohn. He caught a couple of right hands, flash, and he just walked straight through them and powered up and uh, got Stephen Brophy there into the blue corner. So hats off to Alex Mendelssohn. You can take him off this young man. So he came back and uh, got it back there from Stephen Brophy in the latter part of that round. Tremendous intestinal fortitude winds up the left round, kicks to the body. Brophy backs him against the ropes. Mendelssohn thumping away with that right hand to the body, short ones to the side of the head. Front kick to the midsection off the right leg there by Brophy. Round kick to the body. Mendelssohn corner on the gloves. Oh, it was a front kick to the face. Mendelssohn ducked his head into it. Mendelssohn keeps going for the body to perhaps change his strategy now. Maybe start going head hunting. It's the last round. He can afford to do that. He's got to also get his kicking rate up. Here comes the axe, the short right uppercut. Nice body shot there off the right hand by Brophy. Front kick there by the Irishman. Mendelssohn just waiting with a straight left. And a left hook there by the axe, Alex Mendelssohn. He rocked Brophy on that occasion. Well, he's got Brophy in trouble once again. Mendelssohn storming home. Stephen Brophy in a world of hurt after that left hand. Mendelssohn stalking him. What can Brophy do? Can he pull a rabbit out of the hat? Front kick to the midsection by the Irishman. Another thumping left and another one. Alex Mendelssohn more hooks in a tackle box so far. Well, Mendelssohn actually ripping away at, at Brophy's body. He once saw a boy in the morning, Stephen Brophy. The Irish lad's got a lot of heart. He keeps throwing the challenge down to the axe. Brophy has him back into the neutral corner at the moment. Fires out a short right hand. There it is. The end of the fifth and final round of action for the Victorian lightweight title. Listen to the ovation from this capacity crowd, Mark the Hammer. Well, a great, a great crowd on hand here. For this promotion and uh, Alex Mendelssohn giving it his all. Stephen Brophy, one tough son of a gun, put up a, gr a brave battle. How do you see it, Hammer? Well, I'd have to say uh, with that eight count, and even without the eight count, Mendelssohn certainly the busier of, of the two, landing some good clean shots. He fought a very, a very smart fight. He got in close, took away the uh, the advantage of uh, of Brophy's reach, and just chipped away from there. And uh, a very, very well prepared and uh, a great effort from uh, the axe, Alex Mendelssohn. And uh, someone uh, I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more of. And stay with us, folks, because coming up soon we'll see the return of the one, the only, the rock, Paul Major. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a split decision. Well done, Michael. By majority points, Judge Jeff Hutchinson has it 48-47 to the red corner. Judge Jackie Simich went the other way. 48-47 to the blue corner to Brophy. The final card, the deciding card, Judge 
Bryce Burt Whistle gives it 49 47 to the Red Corner. Alex the Axe Mendelton. IAWF Victorian Lightweight Champion. Lightweight title to him. And uh, a very, very well earned one at that. Congratulations to Alex Mendelson and, of course, his trainer, Paul the Rock Major, who I'm sure is hoping will have the same, the same luck later in the evening. Stephen Brogley, bad luck, but you showed plenty of good Irish spirit there. That's it, you know, I kind of had him in the end, but, you know, judges' decision can't do much about it. Many people here supporting you tonight, Steve. Yeah, I've got a lot of friends down here, all the Irish boys, so just thanks for coming down. Sorry I didn't win. For a rematch, maybe? Oh, I'd love one, mate. Okay, come on, give the bash to Stephen Brophy. Your acclamation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in kickboxing, there's a big transition, eh? Alex Mendelssohn was a very competent amateur boxing league champion. He's turned to kickboxing and you are always going to give away a bit of height in those things, Alex. But congratulations, you came home to win. Thanks very much, Howard. That was uh, tops. Thanks very much for coming. Thank Terry King and Alan Andrews for being there in my corner. Terry for training me up for this. Personally, I owe all this to is Paul Major. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here at all. I um, want to thank all the sponsors and everyone for coming and seeing me. Thank you. OK, the act, Alex Mendelssohn. Despite what we may think, many of us, the Victoria Police are a very fine institution who protects our lives, our lives and our souls. In the tradition of boxing and kickboxing, I'd ask you to be pleased up standing as our timekeeper, Michael de Batista, tolls the bell ten times in memory of the death of Sergeant Gary Silk and Constable Rodney Miller, killed last Sunday morning in East Moran. So, those who would like to be upstanding, please do. Those who don't, it's your prerogative. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so in the tradition of kickboxing, we told the bell ten times. Thank you. Also, Daffodil Day, in uh, hope that we can find a cure for cancer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is our semi-mean event. IAWF Australian uh, Middleweight Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee in charge of the action, working in overdrive, the man in total black, Peter Clark, ringside judges, Bryce, Bert Whistle, fresh from Melbourne's Crown Casino. Jeff Hutchison, the man in red, and Miss Jackie Simich, your ringside physician, Dr. George Yanko. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome on my right, 
occupying the red corner, originally from Hobart, now based in Preston, Victoria. Part, integral part of the Master Damon the Trainer, Fitzroy Stars Championship Gymnasium. He brings in a center ring, a record of three bouts, scaling 72.55 kilograms. Wearing black and blue, black trunks, would you welcome Duncan Tassie Hey. Hey! Ladies and gentlemen, occupying the blue corner on my left, trained by former outstanding interstate, international boxer Murray Thompson. This young man from Murray Yellick, one of the pioneers of kickboxing and martial arts, Victorian champion, two times Australian champion, 17 bouts, 14 wins, scaling 72.80 kilograms. Would you welcome from Wuri Yellick, the Lightning, Nick Lyle! Wearing bombers colours of red and black. Peter Clark to get final instructions. Five rounds for the Australian Middleweight Championship. <laughs> okay, referee's instructions in centre ring. Gentlemen, this is a five round fight, and I want to make it clearly understood right now up front there will be no lead kicking. Understand? Lead kicking will take an instant point off by the fighter. Okay? In the event of a knockdown, you hit to the neutral, nearest neutral corner or to the corner that I direct you to. If you're caught in a scrummage at any time, don't raise your hands in surrender. I'm going to call fight out or fight on. Is there any questions from the blue corner? Any questions from the red corner? Gentlemen, touch the gloves now and in the last one. Good luck. Well, we are ready to rumble in our next event. This one for the IA Double F Australian middleweight title between Duncan Haig out of the red corner with Dana the trainer Goodford. And out of the blue corner, the man they call Lightning, Nick Lund. Well, Nick Lund, Michael, is looking in superb condition here tonight. Looks like he's had no absence from the ring at all. Lund dancing about the ring. Nice front kick off the left leg there from Haig. Nick Lund with Murray Thompson, predominantly a boxing trainer in his corner. Nice short left to the head there from Lightning, Nick Lund. They tie up in the centre of the ring. Oh, beautiful left round kick to the head by Lund. Mark the hammer, if he would have connected a bit harder, it could have been lights out. Well, I've watched Nick Lund's legs because they're something special. The man has excellent technique when it comes to the kicking department, Michael. Give him enough room, and uh, he'll let a lot more of those go. A tentative start by Duncan Haig. Lund firing out the wild right uppercut. Oh, spinning crescent kick there by the Lightning, Nick Lund. And they're the types of exciting kicks you will see in full contact above waist fighting. High left round kick to the head there by Lund. Haig fires back with a front kick to the midsection. Straight right there by Lund. Lund's got to look out for Haig's left hook because I feel that would be his best weapon. I think he's a bit of a boxer. Fighting a bit of a kicker with Nick Lund. Duncan Haig from the Dana Goodson stable. Recently moved from Tasmania, I believe. That's correct, Hammer. With the bright lights of Melbourne kickboxing now. I'd go out on a limb and say probably the toughest kickboxing in Australia. This ha happens right here in Melbourne. Well, you've hit the nail on the head again, Hammer. Pardon the pun. Nice right hand there by Lightning Mick Lund. Oh, another right hand to the jaw there by Lund. Short right from Mick Lund. There's the end of the first round of action. I like what I'm seeing from Lightning Mick Lund at the moment, Mark. Well, Mick Lund has uh, certainly got a very high level of skill, the young man. So Duncan Haig is going to really have to keep his guard up high because if he drops those hands for even a, a split second, Michael, those kicks are going to come straight over the top of the gloves and connect to the neck or the side of the head. And that's uh, what Duncan Haig's main, main concern is going to have to be. On the other hand, Nick Lund is going to have to be wary of Duncan Haig's left hook because uh, I believe, and I've been told, that is probably his best weapon.
readiness for the second round of action. This one for the Australian middleweight title. Duncan Haig out of the red corner. Lightning, Nick Lund out of the blue corner. A good first round it was for the man with lightning in his kicks, Nick Lund. Big right hand there by Lund, almost found the mark. Spinning back kick there by Lund. Great agility from him. Oh, stinging left hand there by Nick Lund, rocking the head back of Duncan Hay. See, Nick Lund has a very wide stance, which enables him to, to rip out those spinning kicks. Duncan Hay, a lot more of a sort of a walk-up fighter, very square on. Probably favouring the hand department. Spinning back kick again, followed by a front kick from Lightning. Nick Lund, great agility to put together those kicking combinations. Oh, a thumping right hand to the jaw there by Lightning. Nick Lund follows it up with a right uppercut and a stinging left. Duncan Haig's got to be mobile. Because if he just sits there and lets Nick tick off at him, it's going to be his demise. He's got to stick and move. Haig got caught with the left hand and then with the right. Here goes Lightning. Nick Lund against the road. Here drops Duncan Haig. Listen to the crowd explode. Referee Peter Clark applies the count. Duncan Haig drops in this round. He says he's OK to continue. Will Lund go for the knockout now? Lightning Nick Lund fires at the left hand. Duncan Haig in a world of hurt at the moment. Lund fires back with the right hand. Hay taking more looks at the front door. Here goes Lightning Nick Lund. A high kick by Lund. Haig's going to have to be mobile and either keep away from Lund at this stage or tie him up. Lund just try and last out this round. Continues to pressure Duncan Haig. Chopping away. Haig hanging on for survival. And there it is, the end of the round. A really strong one, that one, Mark, from the right. Lightning Nick Lund. Lightning Nick Lund is just powering up as the fight progresses and doing uh, what we've come to expect of him. He is certainly one exciting fighter, Nick Lund. Always a pleasure to watch. I've seen him on a number of, of occasions, and he's a very entertaining fighter. And uh, you can take that from a fighter's point of view. I like watching him. He's got the kicks and uh, sharp enough on his hands. He's doing a bit of work. Well, he's done a lot of work, rather, with uh, Murray Thompson and at the fitness factory and uh, along, along the lines uh, with bringing his uh, hands up to his leg kicking ability, which is uh, probably right on the money at this stage. Duncan Haig has uh, certainly got his job cut out for him. Mark the Hammer, what would Blitz Hall of Famer Dana Goodson be saying to Duncan Haig at the moment? I think he'd uh, be advising Duncan to try and cut his legs off. The, uh, don't let him have too much uh, air time with those, uh, with those legs by standing back too much and letting him tick off. Be mobile, get in close, work the hands, be either in or out. They'd be in that danger period in between where Nick Lund is going to be able to land the kicks. Uh, as, as he has been doing. Lightning strikes in centre ring here, folks, at the Knox Netball Centre. Nick Lund on the warpath yet again. A high side kick to the face there by Lightning Nick Lund. A spinning back kick. He planted him like a tree on the chest with that one. Lightning Nick Lund. No shortage of brilliance from him so far. Duncan Haig looking a little out of his depth here against Lund. It takes a lot of energy to throw those spinning kicks, Michael, and uh, we're into the third round here, and Nick Lund's still got him coming. That's a great effort from him. Ooh, the right hand came close, but no cigar for Nick Lund. He caught him there with the right hand on that occasion. I think the left, the left side of Duncan Haig's face has worn a few right hands, Michael. He's one tough customer from the Dana Goodson stable. They breed him hard over there. Those right hands will take the start right out of Duncan Haig. There's another to the jaw. It's batting practice at the moment for Nick Lund. Nice right hand again and another one from Lund. Duncan Haig in a world of hurt. Lund on a demolition mission. He wants to put him away. Haig. Haig on rubber leg street. He goes down in the blue corner. Listen to the crowd explode. Referee Peter Clark, it's good night, Irene. The towel being thrown in by trainer Dana Goodson. 
Well, it's great, a victory for Lightning Nick. A great battle by Duncan Haig, but Nick won. Gold class all the way, Michael. Certainly putting a brilliant performance here tonight. Clubbing right hand. Excellent spinning kicks. There you see it. You've got to appreciate that. Such skill and ability from this man. He's looking superb. Looking the picture of fitness here tonight, Nick Lund. And Duncan Haig, not up to the challenge. But I'm sure he'll be back into the gym and uh, preparing for his next challenge. But, uh, may I say, uh, what, a, what a brilliant performance once again by Nick Lund. Take my hat off to him. An outstanding performer. Ladies and gentlemen, well done, Michael. One minute, 40 seconds of round three. Referee Peter Clark acting on the advice from Master Dana Goodson. Called it off, your winner and new IAWF Australian middleweight champion, the Lightning Nick Lund. Well, there you have it, Mark. The Hammer Lightning Strikes in centering Nick Lund, the new Australian champion. Very happy to put Michael and Nick Lund, as I said, a deserving Australian champion. IAAF. Great technique shown from him. Exactly what uh, any up and coming fighter should be inspiring towards. The type of technique that we've seen Nick Lund throwing here tonight. What a great effort. You're in the big league now. You're in New York, Melbourne Town, where all the great champs are. You've been a pretty formidable opponent. You showed plenty of heart there. Well, thanks. Uh, I'd just like to you know, thank everyone for giving me the chance to come along tonight and have a go. Not really my. Uh, favourite set of rules for contact, I'm more of a tie fighter. More of a more tie fighter, knees and elbows and that stuff? Yeah, yeah, so this was a bit of a touch for me, even just losing the leg kick. But you'll be back? Oh yeah, for sure. Master Dana, good to see you again. <laughs> Master Dana, Nick Lund, he's got all the moves, you know, back flicks and uh, all that sort of stuff. It was a big project right from the start, wasn't it? Yeah, well, you know, it was a uh, Tazzy's fourth fight, so I, I think he just deserves a little hand, having four fights, fighting a two times straight fight. Um, some, somebody pulled out, uh, they asked us, asked me, hey, you want a chance? I'd like to give everybody a chance. This chance, Nick was just a few more, a little bit too experienced for him, but hey, I got a couple more, more boys in the gym I'd like to have a go at you. I got about 35 fighters, I got five, want you? Okay, Duncan Hagen, bastard team of the trainer. Murray, come in too. Nick, we had a little chat before the show. It's good to catch up with you again because you're always smiling. You're a family man. You've got family responsibilities, but you're looking good, looking sharp in there because you've been a champ for a long time. Yeah, well, that's right, Aaron. Thanks. The only young man, of course. Oh, most definitely. Very young, very young. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll be quick. Okay, um, basically, I'd just like you know, to thank the promoters of the, the night and especially Duncan Haig, of course. Um, yeah, good clap. Obviously, Donnie Pestle, the New Zealand champion, pulled out due to injury, and Duncan Haig sort of stepped in place. And I am very grateful for that. I especially want to thank Murray, my, my new trainer. He's actually my boxing trainer, but the most respected trainer that I've ever seen. And as I say, I'd like to thank my family, all my supporters down here, my sponsors. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Nick Lund. Okay, there's big challenges here from Chris Collard and Pat Christoffi. Pat, come in the centre ring. Okay, Pat Christoffi and Chris Collard. You bring them in the ring, Dana. Bring uh, Chris Collard, the Aboriginal warrior. Chris, you're prepared to challenge Nick Lund? Yeah, absolutely. I'll challenge anyone, anywhere, anytime. As long as I fight, that's my goal. Okay, Dana. He is the Australian champion. Australian champion, Australian champion. I think that's a good goal. How about the next time? How would you guys like to see that? Okay. You've got guys queuing up all the way, so you're going to have a busy schedule for the rest of the year, Nick. Yeah, it's certainly a lot, a lot to think about, and I guess you know, where the money is is where I go. <laughs> Short and sweet. Murray Thompson, you've been skilling, uh, schooling Nick with uh, amateur boxing and kickboxing. Uh, he's got a busy itinerary coming up, maybe, so he'll have to be in the gym nearly every night from now on, Murray. Yeah, hopefully we get him a few boxing fights as well, so um, just see what happens. We'll take the challenges as I come. Okay, Murray Thompson and Nick Lightning Line. We're going to have a 15 minute break and we'll be back with our main event. Oh, wow. 
Well, he certainly... Super focus, Michael. Ready to rock and roll. Let's go across to the man in the suit, yeah, Howard right. Lee. Protect yourself at all the times. Fuck me right. Peace on earth. May God bless. Reach for the stars and keep punching. In the clearing stands, a kickboxer. A fighter by his trade. He carries the reminder of every god that let him down or cut him till he cried out. In his anger and his shame. I am leaving. I am leaving. But the kickboxer still remains. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding for the American National Anthem, Star Spangled Banner, to be followed by the Australian National Anthem, Advanced Australia Fair.
Kim Ford. Miss Kim Ford. Gentlemen, this bout has been sanctioned by the Professional Boxing Control Board of Victoria and Martial Arts Board. Representative Ringside, Bob Todd, Bob McCarthy, Malcolm McGuinness, and Bernard Farmer. Your ringside physician, Dr. George Yanko. Your judges for the main event, Peter Clark, Ms. Jackie Simich, Jeff Hutchinson. Timekeeper is Michael DeBattista. Callers for Fox. Sports, The Hammer, Mark Castanini, and Daryl Eastlake of Kickboxing, Michael Chavello from Kickboxer International Blitz Publications. Ladies and gentlemen, on the site where legends are made, the Knox Regional Indoor Netball Centre, it's showtime! You've got the best ringside seats in the house. You've got to fight for your right. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! 12 rounds of boxing for the IAWF Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome on my left from Honolulu, his base from Hilo in Hawaii. He comes to Melbourne with a perfect record. 16 bouts, 16 wins, 12 by knockout. 22 years of age with his mentor, Rudy Valentino, wearing earth brown trunks. Would you welcome the king, Robert Whitebeer. Whitebeer. At the scale, 73.45 kilograms. Across the ring in the red corner, Alan Andrews, Terry King. He is the original rock, the hard rock, the hard rock cafe, the solid rock, rock around the clock from Frederick Alley, right here in Melbourne's eastern region. In boxing, kickboxing, what a record. 58 bouts, 53 wins, 4 losses, 27 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, wearing black trunks with red trim, also scaling 73.45 kilograms, would you welcome the Rock of Ages, Paul the Rock Major, Major, 12 rounds of boxing, ladies and gentlemen, the KSH Services Technology, main event. Spoken both fighters in the back room. Do you have any questions at this time? Listen to my commands. Protect yourselves at all time. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Look at the look of intensity on the face of the Rock Paul Major. The stare down there with the King Robert Wapier. 
And just a quick thank you to all of tonight's sponsors, Sheets Back Bar, Formula One Hair, GNS Bailey and Co, Performance Auto Electrical, Just Jeep. Without these people, the sport would be going nowhere. The time for talk is over underway in the first round of world title action. It's The Rock against The King. Paul Major against Robert Wapier. This is the moment that Australian kickboxing has been waiting for. The return of The Rock, folks. What a standing ovation he received when he's made his way into the ring. A look of determination. Focus on the face of The Rock. Look how well he moves. Stinging with those punches. The invasion of the body snatcher. Both fighters just seeing what the other has to offer at this stage. Major. He's not unloading yet, Michael, I can tell you that. When he unloads, I'm sure we're going to know about it, Hannah. The Rock, the excellence of execution. Wapia trying to dummy the leg, then come through with the big right hand. Major slamming the left hand to the body. Wapia turns around. Moving well early, the man from Hawaii. Comes to Australia undefeated. 16 fights, 12 knockouts. But he's never fought a man of the calibre of the Rock Paul Major. The Rock ducks underneath the round kick, fires back to the left-right combination. Great anticipation there by Majors. Hurt him with the body shot. Wapia forced into the blue corner. Here goes Paul Major. Will we see him unleash the beast in centre ring? Chance of the Rock. Wapia wound up for a spinny hook kick and just a slip to the canvas. There was nothing in it. Major moves straight back in and he mares the end of the first round. The return of the Rock Hammer. Well, the Rock, after an absence from the ring, travelling around and so forth, he's back into centre ring here tonight. Great, showing some great anticipation. Those kicks, ducking under the kicks, moving well. I mean, that's a very hard manoeuvre to do because when you're getting down that low, Michael, you have to you have to be very wary because you drop your head that far down, you can always get caught in the face with a shin kick. So, Major Major was ducking under the, the kick, coming back with some very tidy handwork, and that uh, that shows the experience of the fighter. I feel, and uh, at this stage, I feel he's only going to get stronger as the fight progresses. Wapia is certainly going to have his job cut out for him tonight. 16 fights, as opposed to Major's 24. For a man who's been out of action for a while, Paul the Rock Major looks a picture of physical perfection here tonight. Mind you, Michael, Wapia showed a bit of a flash there with that spinning kick. He did. The Rock has found the lead early in the second round. Against the ropes. Referee Bryce Burt was not pleased to count. Wapia says, I'm OK to go on, Double B, Bryce. Wapia comes out firing. The Rock goes to the body. Look at him go! He's, He's dropped him again! He lifted, he actually, with that right body rip, he lifted both Wapia's feet off the ground. Tremendous power! And he's winded him. That was it, Mark. He called it before the body snatcher. The That's Rock, Paul Major. Certainly Paul Major's strong point is those rock-hard body shots. Wapia's claiming he was hit low, but that was no low blow. That was right in the midsection. And uh, that's winded, Wapia. Robert Wapia in a world of hurt at the moment. He's that uh, man I respect most, Bryce Burtwistle. He's uh, looking after the fighter. The, fight, the fighter's well-being is always paramount. And Bryce is always the man to look after the fighters in centre ring. The Rock Paul Major on a demolition mission. He goes for the body of Wapia again. There he goes to the abdomen. Wapia goes down. He planted him like a tree. The Rock going to the body. Wapia in a world of pain. His mouth guard dislodged. It's good night, Irene. A knockout victory for the Rock Paul is. Major champion of there the it world. Is, Michael. As we predicted earlier, the Rock. The body snatcher. You called it, Hammer. Well, he has lost nothing in his absence. That's the way he finished his opponents. And he just picked up where he's left off from the rock. And uh, I think uh, we'll have King Robert Wapier 
doing a bit of a count of his ribs to see if they're, if they're all there or if they are still there, whereabouts they are. Awesome punching power there to the body well, by The Rock. It's something, something to behold, the way he gets his shoulder behind that right hand to the body. I actually seen Wakey's feet lift, physically lift off the canvas. He had him airborne with that right body shot, which was the first droppage. So uh, there's nothing uh, nothing up to worry about that. I'll tell you what, Wakey is going to be one sore boy around the, uh, the abdominal region. But uh, Paul The Rock Major, Back in the winner's circle. What a sensational result for The Rock. Paul Major, his return to the ring, triumphant. Capturing the world IAAF title. Here at the Knox Depot Centre against the King, Robert Wakeham from Hawaii. Those barreling body blows just overwhelmed the King, Robert Wakeham. Oh, no. I think the worst one's Little Davey down there. Little Davey. Davey Crockett? Yeah, that's him. Okay, in. Ladies and gentlemen, 44 seconds into round two, we congratulate the new world super middleweight champion, the Rock of Ages, Paul Major. And a great ovation there, Mark, the new world champion, the Rock, Paul Major. And Paul Major's back in the winner's circle indeed. I look forward to seeing him step back into the ring. Robert Wakeya thought he had his measure. How mistaken he was. All the way from Hawaii, Hawaiian and American champion. Come all that way for a lesson in above rules kickboxing. Ready, Valentine. Come on, give Robert Wyatt here from uh, Hawaii a uh, big thank you to come into Melbourne. Robert. Obviously those body punches, come across here Robert, look towards the camera, those body shots did the damage. Did do the damage. Yeah, you, you couldn't sustain them. Sorry, you can't go. And uh, have you enjoyed your short time in Melbourne, Australia? I had a good time. You'll be back. Rudy, come across here. You're not happy with that. A uh, bit of discussion in the corner with referee Bryce Birdwistle. How did you see it, Rudy? Well, it looked like he got hit in the groin. He should have uh, had at least a little rest period before he came back out again. But I'd just like to say, we love Melbourne, we love Australia, and we like to come back and maybe have a rematch. So we'd like to come back if you want to. Thank you very much. Okay, Master Dana, you act as the representative, uh, the liaison man. How did you see it? You're pretty unhappy. You had an animated discussion with referee Brian Spurkwistle in the corner after that. When, when do you take a point? When do you give him a break? You hit him in the groin. There's a clear shot. You should at least give him a three-minute break. We, we fight for a title here. This guy come all the way across the uh, Tasman or whatever you want to call it. You're pretty disappointed. Okay. Master Dana, come on, give Robert White here, Rudy Valentino and his lovely wife a big thank you for coming to Melbourne Town. The Rock and his ladies. <laughs> the Rock, congratulations. Must be a tremendous feeling to be back in action. You can't hold the microphone because Terry King hasn't taken your gloves off. Howard Lee, you are a legend, Howard. I'd like to thank everyone that's come tonight. Look, I didn't hit the guy low. I, uh, everyone knows I'm a body puncher and... Uh, he, this guy is, they say he's the next Alexio and, and uh, he's got some good moves, some good kicks. And I would really like to thank uh, Rudy Valentino, his family and the King uh, for coming over and giving me a shot at this. And uh, let's give him a big round of applause because they're, they're sportsmen. Yeah. There's a million people that have helped me uh, get here tonight. Of course, the biggest thanks goes to uh, Terry King, my coach. Come over here, Terry. Yeah. My coach, Terry King, we've been working hard for the last four months, and uh, we knew that the young guy was keen and hungry, and, uh, and he, he showed that tonight. He jumped straight on me, and I had to, uh, had to really pound back. And uh, I really appreciate everyone coming out tonight and seeing what we've got. Special thanks to all the sponsors, K and H. A big special thanks to them, Hyundai, everyone that's here, uh, Gary Bailey, everyone that's put money in, I really appreciate it. And uh, look, you guys are fantastic. 
special thanks. I'd like to dedicate this fight to my family who've stuck through me with, through thick and thin, and I love them with all my heart. And uh, thank you, Australia. The Rock, Paul Major. Three cheers for The Rock. Ebbet. 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 You want to do that? Rock around the clock. One o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, rock. Four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, rock. Seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, rock. Rock around the clock. The Rock of Ages. He's back. Light of the night. Well, there you have it, Hammer. A triumphant return to the ring for the Rock Paul Major, the body snatcher. You called it. He went to the body of the King Robert Wapier, and it was good night, Irene, for the man from Hawaii. Well, it certainly was, Michael. A lot of people uh, underestimate the uh, the body shots of uh, Paul Major. But when he when he gets his uh, shoulders behind those uh, hits to the body, it really hurts. I can tell you that much. And uh, I actually seen uh, Wapier's feet physically lift off the canvas, as I called it, when that uh, body shot rocketed in. Uh, that started the demise of him. What amazing power. Folks, hope you enjoyed it from myself, Michael Chavello, and my verbal sparring partner, former Australian champion, Mark the Hammer Castanini. Thank you for joining us here at the Knox Netball Centre. Until next time, good night. Good night.